afternoon, everybody. I'm Christina, and I'm a partner at Weller's Accountants. Um, and I'm going to talk to you today about some ideas on how you can think about retaining your staff after Chris's fairly gloomy outlet there. Um, so I have been with Weller's for 19 years, um, and I am the HR partner. I am also a qualified bean counter, so hopefully you think that qualifies me to talk about this subject today. So why do we care about retaining staff? We're business owners, we all want to do well in the marketplace, and to do well in the marketplace, we have to be winning in the workplace. A great example of a company that did indeed that was Netflix. Um, they started off in the doldrums, unfortunately, and then realized that they were gonna have to change things from the inside out. They took on a lady um, called Patty McCord, who was tasked with basically setting up the company's core values and getting that out there to the rest of the team. She did that, and then herself and the CEO decided that they wanted to take things one step further and look at employee motivation and also talent management. So what came from that exercise was something called Netflix Culture Deck. Um, this is hailed, this document is hailed as um, a really big thing to come out of the Silicon Valley. It basically allowed Netflix to set up a platform and they became very successful after implementing this. What they realised was they needed to grow a culture. You can't force it, you have to grow it. Um, they did lose 30% of their workforce when this all came in, um, but that was a conscious decision and hard decisions have to be made. So they did the first thing, they got the values sorted and then they went, went one step further. This is the values of another well-known company who they put the values on the wall, they had the values in reception, but they didn't live by those values unfortunately, particularly the top one, integrity to their detriment and they failed. So where does everybody want to work? Apparently here. Does anybody know where this is? Google. Indeed, yes, Google. So Google are massive winners in the marketplace and they put that all down to winning in the workplace. In the last 10 years, they have been ranked number one in seven of those 10 years as the top place to work. So they're obviously doing something right. This is some feedback from some of the employees of Google, which is posted on the Glassdoor website. None of them are obviously financial. You've got the smart perks there. I think we all know that um, the perks at Google are amazing. They even have a hairdresser in situ um, in the office. Genius co-workers I thought was quite interesting, so that kind of shows that people do like to learn from their colleagues. And it is more than just about the money. Now obviously Google pay well. Um, the stats do show, however, that as long as you are paying a fair reward to your employees, throwing more money at them is not what's going to motivate them. Richard Branson, obviously another massive winner in the marketplace, puts his success down to what he puts into his employees and winning in the workplace. So some of the things that you can think about on how to take care of your employees. So some of this is, you know, our experience at Wellers and obviously being in charge of HR. Um, I have learned a few things about this along the way. Training and development. I think people sometimes are a little bit hesitant on investing in people because they think upskilling people is then going to encourage them to bugger off to the opposition, basically. Um, what I would say is if you are not investing in people and you are not allowing people to achieve their potential with training and development, they're going to go anyway. Um, so you do need to make that a real priority. Appraisals, probably my favourite topic. Um, a lot of people think, yes, they do take a lot of time, they cost money, um, but what a great forum for giving people a voice. 
and also in terms of feedback, that is two-way feedback. So we find at Wellers that um, one of the main things on appraisal forms um, in terms of what people want to talk about, the key thing they want to talk about, is how am I doing? Which is quite a powerful statement, I think, and it shows that people do want feedback. I think these days there's a hesitation around feedback. People think, oh, I don't want to be mean. Um, I don't want to be critical. But actually, if you talk to employees, that is what they want. They want to grow and they want to develop. And how are they going to do that if you're not telling them how to achieve their potential? So feedback is everything. Appreciation. How many times do we say thank you? So I have heard it said. People say, well, we pay them. That's enough. We don't need to say thank you. You do need to say thank you. And it's the little things um, that obviously encourage people to stay and make them feel like you care about them. So we ran a Wellers staff day a couple of years ago and we issued these files to people so they've just got a calculator in but they look the business. The feedback that we got on that day was far better than any feedback that I get from giving people quite large pay rises. So a £20 folder did more for our staff members than some rather large pay rises. So sometimes it is about thinking what will be important to our employees. These were important to our employees. They thought that we cared about what they look like when they're going out to clients and we're giving them the tools with which to do that. Next thing is inclusion. When was the last time you said to an employee, what do you think? The downside of us living in an IT culture is a lot of stuff tends to be very systemised and it's a tick box exercise and we give people instructions and we tell them to follow stuff and we tell them to do an audit file and tick the boxes and make it all look very nice. Employees need to feel that you care about what they think. Setting up things like development groups, um, asking, asking for their opinions on things. You don't have to take it, but they feel like you care about what they think. And at the end of the day, you took these people on to help you in the marketplace. <coughs> if you're not listening to them, then was there any point? So initiatives and rewards. Um, some of these are about tax incentives. So top left, you've got childcare voucher scheme. That can give your employees up to £900 a year of tax saving. It also gives the employer tax saving, so it's a win-win situation. Next to that, you've got loans. So you can give an employee a £10,000 tax-free loan for any purpose. No tax implication at all. So what better thing to do with property prices? You might be thinking that you could help out your employees with a deposit on a house. Um, then we've got health checks. So you can give your employees up to £500 towards health checks every year. Again, a massive plus for the employer. Hopefully you would avoid long-term sickness. Um, so that's a win-win situation. Down the bottom, we've got some modes of transport. So you've got the cycle to work scheme, whereby people can buy a bike and obviously get some tax breaks around that. We've also got the aeroplane and the car. So the HMRC um, offer something called a relocation allowance for employees. So if you take on employees from far away, you can pay up to £8,000 towards their relocation costs and there's no tax implication there. So top right, not necessarily a tax incentive, but we'd all like to do our work from a hammock and the Seychelles. Um, flexible working is a big thing. Um, it's becoming very important, even in terms of attracting people. So I get asked more and more in interviews now if we offer flexible working arrangements. Work-life balance is obviously a massive thing. People want to spend more time at home, less time commuting, um, so it's becoming more and more important. Last thing on their perk box, some people may have heard of this, 
Um, if you Google it, it's basically the um, top thing for employers to give perks to their employees. They give discounts on um, various brands like John Lewis, Waitrose, things like that. Obviously that costs the employer to be part of that scheme, but really good discounts and stuff going on there. I'm going to skip through interactive at the moment because I don't think I've got time. So last but is share schemes. So giving people a piece of the pie. The motivational impact of this um, is probably quite well recognised. Um, they are um, definitely in, an incentivising thing for most employees. So you can get income tax, national insurance and capital gains tax breaks from being part of these share schemes. Um, for the employer, you also get a corporation tax break. So again, we're in a win-win situation. So we're just going to whiz through some of the main schemes that are on offer and obviously you can um, ask questions afterwards if you want more details. So a share incentive plan, this allows people to actually make instant shareholders. You can give people free shares or you can set up the plan where people buy shares and then as an employer you can match them with free shares. Save as you earn, um, that's basically an option scheme where people can save up to £500 a month but it's out of their gross pay so there's the tax incentive there for people. Company share option plans tend to, to be used by larger companies, um, generally those that don't qualify for the EMI scheme, so people probably have heard of the EMI. This tends to be the most popular um, scheme on the market, it's very flexible, um, it doesn't cost a huge amount to set one up, you do need a lawyer and an accountant to do it, um, but generally it is the favoured one. ESS is basically exchanging some employee rights for shares. It used to be very popular because of the CGT um, allowance. You could basically um, get the full gain free of capital gains tax. Sadly, in the budget, that is no longer the case. And finally, forfeit shares. So these tend to be used by startup companies. Um, basically, you're agreeing to forfeit some salary for shares, um, and you have to hope that you're in the next Google and that's going to be worth it. So just to recap, um, if you're winning in the workplace, you're winning in the marketplace. If you have happy employees generated by all the things that I've talked about, your productivity automatically goes up. Do remember to have fun. We do spend a lot of time at work, so it is about fun as well. And start investing in people. So that's not about digging into your pockets and spending a load of money. Do what Netflix did. Sit down with your employees and find out what matters to them. Thank you for listening. I'm Christine Wellers.